Hey there, it's your main math teacher, Mr. Boyd, and we're back at it again. Today we're talking about the intermediate value theorem and the mean value theorem um, with a focus for the AP Calculus exam. Let's start with the intermediate value theorem. Um, for each of these, we're going to look at the theorem itself. I'm going to explain them, um, try to give sort of an explanation, um, and then we'll have a visual and an example. Um, so the easiest way for me to think about the intermediate value theorem is like this. Uh, when I was born, uh, I was little. I was less than two feet tall. So let's start at two two feet tall. Um, today, I'm a little bit taller. I'm more than six feet tall. So the question that you could use to start thinking about this um, is, was there a day in my life where I woke up and I was four feet tall? Well, of course there was. How could I get from two feet to six feet if at no point in the middle I hit four feet? Was I ever five feet tall? Definitely. Was I ever six feet four inches tall? I'm six three now. Was I ever six four? Don't know. I mean, maybe I got bigger and shrank or something like that, but the idea is any number between two feet and six feet, I've definitely been that height, at least for a moment at some point, because I had to continuously grow up to the size I am now. And that's essentially what this is going to say. Let's take a look at it. Um, given some function that's continuous, like my continuous growth over my life, um, continuous on a closed interval from A to B, and where the endpoints are not equal in terms of their y values. So I started at two feet, I grew up to six feet, those aren't equal, that's what that's saying. For any k between f of a and f of b, in our example that was four, four feet tall, then there must exist some c in the interval from a to b, we're talking about x values here, such that f of c equals k. So all this is saying, based on my example, is there must have been some age in my life from when I was little until now for where no matter what you name in terms of a height between two and six, I was that height. That's all it says. Okay, visually, it looks like this. If we have some point A and some point B, then we're going to have F of A, and I'm making up that F of A is greater than F of B. All it says is they can't be equal. F of A and F of B, let's put in those points. So F of A is up here. F of B is down here. It says, no matter what happens, no matter how the function gets from here to there, so long as it's continuous, you can be assured you're going to hit all those values in there. So let's arbitrarily pick K to be somewhere in there. And so the question then, could you draw a function that connects this and that, that is continuous, and you never hit that dotted line? Like, I, I doubt it. I mean, you, you couldn't. Because you could say, well, I'm going to go up. Well, you could go up and you could come back down. And, oh, you know what? You hit that line right there. In fact, that's at a value of C. So that's what that's saying. Say, so when you hit a value of C, whatever that is, that value has to exist for every value that's in between F of A and F of B. That's all it is. Let's look at a quick example. Okay, we've got a couple questions to go with it. So given some function F that's continuous, Okay, first of all, it meets the criteria of the intermediate value theorem. It's continuous over all the real numbers. Okay, and f of 0 is 0 and f of 4 is 10. Think of those as your endpoints. Not equal. That means the second criterion of the intermediate value theorem. So first of all, does it apply? Yes, it does. Because it is continuous and endpoints are not equal. They're different. Or I'll, I'll put it like this. 10 is not equal to 0. However, a word of caution, as of right now, with the information we have, the intermediate value theorem only applies over the interval from 0, oh, excuse me, no, no, that was right, it's from 0 to 4. I'm talking the x values. It only applies from 0 to 4. So we couldn't make any claims outside of that. Let's look at these next questions. Part B, is it guaranteed that the function is going to achieve a value of 3 in that interval? Well, let's see. It started at 0. It ended up at 10. The intermediate value theorem guarantees that any number you name in between these two will be achieved. So, yeah, it does. Do you know the x value where it's achieved? No, there's no way to know that. But we do know that, yeah, 3 is in the middle of those. So absolutely, that's a yes. Part C, is it guaranteed that the function achieves a value of negative 1? We have a 0. We have a 10. Is it guaranteed that negative 1 will be achieved? No because it's outside the interval. Don't get too excited though. Is it possible that it achieved negative one? It is. All we're saying is we don't know if it did or not. It's not guaranteed. For all we know, the function started at zero, it decreased, went down to negative one, and then came back up to negative ten. 
we don't know. So that's a basic overview of the intermediate value theorem. We're going to move on to the mean value theorem and let's do a little bit of a lead-in question to help think about it. You may want to pause the video here um, and try to answer these questions and try to do a little doodling or something like that or come up with examples um, that would make these true or false. So here's the questions. Are all continuous functions differentiable and are all differentiable functions continuous? Let's think about that. If I draw a continuous function is there a way that I could draw it that would not be differentiable? Let's think about it for a second. Continuous function could be something that makes a parabola. It could be some sort of quadratic. That's continuous. Is it also differentiable? Yeah, sure it is. So at first look, it appears that we do have something that's differentiable. Um, let's keep thinking. What about an absolute value graph? That's definitely continuous. I didn't have to lift my finger to draw that. Um, is that differentiable at every point in its domain? Uh, not that little guy right there, that's a cusp. And at a cusp, the tangent, at this one anyway, the tangent could be positive, could be negative, could be horizontal. And remember, since a derivative comes from a limit where you can only have one value, since we have multiple values, the derivative does not exist at that point. Well, that convincingly answers our question. No, not all continuous functions are differentiable. Definitely not. But let's flip that now. Are all differentiable functions continuous? Hmm. What happens when you have a discontinuity in your graph? Like if you have a piecewise function. Okay, I've drawn some rough sketch of something that has a discontinuity. So what I'm trying to draw is a differentiable function that is not continuous. I'm trying to be the smart aleck that breaks the rule. And as I try to do that, sure, I've got non-continuous, non but is this differentiable at every point? Let's see. Um, differentiable out here? Sure. Yeah, I think so. I can put a tangent line on right here. That's no problem right here. Yep, I can put on a tangent line. What happens there, though? What's the slope at that point? What's the rate of change? Is it like that? Is it negative? Is it vertical? I don't know. So this function is not differentiable at every point. So for this definition, we're going to say no. That's... That doesn't fit this definition, because it wasn't differentiable, so it's not a counterexample. And as it turns out, we aren't going to be able to draw an example that makes this false. So it turns out, yes, all differentiable functions are continuous. Now, that could be a little bit confusing at first, because I, I said, no, this doesn't work. What I mean is, it doesn't work as a counterexample against this question. And I can't come up with one, because, yes, every differentiable function is continuous. Now, with that in mind, Let's look to the mean value theorem. Okay. We have a function. It's continuous on the closed interval from A to B and differentiable on the open interval from A to B. Then, if that's the case, there's going to be at least some number C in the interval from A to B. Again, those are X values. For which we have this. Now, there's a couple things I want you to notice. First of all, um, this right here is just a slope. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. It's just a different way of writing slope. And look at that. Derivatives are slopes. We've learned that. The derivative at some point is going to equal this. Well, it's a little more interesting than that. The other thing I want you to know, this also represents an average rate of change. Attention AP testers. This is one way that AP will notify you that a question is using the mean value theorem. If you see the phrase average rate of change, 99% of the time, if not always, that's going to be a mean value theorem question. Okay, so you may want to jot that down and kind of stick that in the back of your brain. Okay, there's another thing I want to point out. Um, why is it that right here that's a closed interval and then suddenly we're operating on an open interval for differentiability? Well, that's simply this. If you have some function that's continuous from here to there, it can be continuous all the way through those points. But when you try to put derivatives on those endpoints, they could be any kind of direction. And so when we talk about differentiable, endpoints of a function are never differentiable because we can't tell what the rate of change is at that one point. So that's not an accident. That is absolutely intentional. And let's talk about the visual for what this looks like. If we have some function that has A and B, we're dealing with A and B again, A, B, and this time let's make F of A right here, and we'll put F of B as the greater value this time just for fun. Let me plot my points real quick. And it says, even if I have some sort of a weird curve that goes up to there, 
my average rate of change, or my slope between those two points, will be equivalent to the derivative value at some point. And so what that looks like is this. Over here, somewhere, there is some point where the tangent would be parallel to the average rate of change. Okay, and here we've got an example where there's a curve and it started out steeper than the average. It ends up less steep than the average. And at some point in the middle, it has to be exactly equal to the average rate of change. Okay, we've got an example we're going to run through on this and that'll be the video for today. Okay, this is an actual AP exam question that we're going to look at. We've got a function defined on the closed interval from negative 3 to 4. The graph consists of a line, segment, and a semicircle. Okay, we want to find the average rate of change. Okay, there you go, average rate of change. That's what I was talking about before. Average rate of change of f on the interval from negative 3 to 4. Now I hope you have cause for pause here because we learned just a minute ago that in order for the mean value theorem to apply we have to have a differentiable function and it doesn't say anything about that up here. And there's a hint right here that hey maybe we're using mean value theorem but be careful we don't know yet or we haven't discussed yet if it's differentiable. So let's do that. Okay, well or let's, uh, we'll consider that for next for a little bit later. Let's do the average rate of change right now. Average rate of change of this is just the slope. And so that looked like f of b, f of b was a y value, I'm going to use negative 2, minus the y value of the other endpoint, that's 1, and then it was b minus a in the definition, so that's 4 minus negative 3. Simplify that out, you've got negative 3 over 7, that's part a, we're done. Let's go on to part b. In part b, there is no point for which f prime of c, okay, now that's starting to look like the mean value theorem. No point for which f prime of c equals the average rate of change. Interesting. Explain why this statement does not contradict the mean value theorem. All right, so that goes back to what we were talking about with the function needing to be differentiable. Right here, we have a cusp. And so that's why the mean value theorem does not apply. So what I'm going to write is at x equals 0, f is not, or is non-differentiable. Oops, ran out of space. Therefore, mean value theorem, oops, mean value theorem does not apply over that interval. And I'm going to refer back to the interval they named, the interval negative 3. And I'm going to write it in the form they wrote it, t less than or equal to 4. Not does not apply over the interval like that. Okay, that's part b. Part c, find the average rate of change from 0 to 2. Okay, I'm going to need to go back up and look at the image again. So 0, I'm going to go ahead and try to pull some, some coordinates off of here. It looks like at 0, we have 0 comma negative 2. And up here, we have 2, 0. And so, I hope you're able to look at that and know that that's 1. It goes from negative 2 to 2 over a distance of 2. Think rise over run. Rise of 2, run of 2. Okay, so that's 1. Find the average rate of change? It's 1. And let's do part D. Is there a point where the average rate of change on F on the interval from 0 to 2 is equal to the instantaneous rate of change. And so I'm going to look back at that same interval from here to there. And so let's take a look at it. I'm going from here to there. How do we do this? Well, let's ask again. Does the mean value theorem apply to this? We have two endpoints. We found that rate of change. Remember, we need the function to be continuous and differentiable. So from an x value of 0 to an x value of 2, is this function continuous? Sure it is. We can see it goes right through there. Let me erase some of this extra stuff so it's easier to see. Sure it is. From here to there, absolutely continuous. Is it differentiable? Yeah, it's a smooth curve. It's definitely differentiable. So since we have that, the mean value theorem does apply. So we need to write that. So since f is continuous, I'm going to abbreviate it, over the closed interval from 0 to 2, and I'm matching that up exactly to the definition, and differentiable
over the open interval from 0 to 2. Again, I'm matching the definition. AP wants to see that we're referring exactly to the definition. MVT applies. Since f of b minus f of a over b minus a equals 1, f of c equals 1 for some value c in the interval from 0 to 2. Let's double check. Did that answer the question? Is there a point where the average rate of change on the interval 0 to 2 is equal to the instantaneous rate of change? There it is. Okay. So here we have said yes. We've stated that it's because of the mean value theorem but additionally, we've stated why the mean value theorem applies. Okay, so this is a really standard type of AP free response question um, where they're going to really dig deep and see do you really get the nuances and all of the elements of the hypothesis, those being the fact that you have a continuous and differentiable function. They're really checking to see if you know that, and that's really, really common. Okay, that's today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time.